get it while it's hot. The dude mung is 3,000. No monkey. Do you do that? Say what up? It's your boy Dude Mungus, man. Today, uh, I just wanted to sit down and we got to have this talk. Um, before before I get into that, I have to say thank y'all again. Please don't get annoyed with me saying thank y'all, but dude, I truly appreciate everyone that's following, everyone that subscribes, um, everyone that likes, shares, anything, dude. Yo, I, I appreciate you, man. Totally appreciate you. My dad, I told you from a young age, taught me to be no, grateful okay. and thankful. So, yo, I appreciate y'all. Today, I want to have this conversation, <clears throat> excuse me, this sit down talk because y'all have been seeing me do some reviews on motorcycles and always my initial impression, I'm just the guy that loves bikes. I, dude, I love bikes. I don't care what it is, I love it. So my initial impression is always excited, but there's so much more I wanna say, but my excitement just takes over when I'm riding a bike, dude, and I'm just, I'm just geeked. <laughs> so, um, after riding these bikes, it's just different characteristics I felt. And I started this on my YouTube, I started this uh, roll race series, trying to see what was the best roll, ra best roll race bike. But this is just what I felt from the seat of my pants. So I'm gonna go down the list and talk about every motorcycle that I've ridden on in 2020 and give my opinion. And at the end, I'm gonna give my opinion of what's the best roll race bike in my opinion like it doesn't make it bible doesn't make it law i'm just saying from what i rode and the, and the modification that was on that bike is this is just what i felt also you see Groot in the background uh the 2020 mt10 i am taking this bike back today sad face i'm really i'm really sad my buddy told me i could keep it as long as i take over the note you know what i ain't at that level yet <laughs> so yes Groot is going back today i guess we gotta start off with that shot um this is my bike, it's a 2012 um, 1199 Kenigali, um carbon wheels, full exhaust, tuned by Tune Boy and the Duck Shot, which has this bike running amazing, by the way. And it makes a lot of people doubt that this bike is as fast as what it is. No, it's legit that fast. It's just it's just set up pretty well for what it is. I have the front end straps to help when I do do road racing. So this bike um, is a torque monster, not really a top end uh, bike, this is, I don't even think you could gear this to be a non Tim's bike. This is a this is a half mile bike. That's just you know, that's just what that shot is. So that shot has a lot of torque, a lot of down low, has some pretty decent mid range, and then up top it just it kind of starts to fall on its face. So like around 160, 170, it just starts to you know it just starts to nose off. The next bike uh, that I rode was my man Jack B Quick's bike. Jack, hey hey bro, you know what? I thought it was cool. You didn't have to beat me that bad, but it's all good. It's all good. It's all good, but I rode Zocalo. Uh, that's Jack B. Quick's 2020 um, S1000 Double R, but it's set up uh, for road racing in the stock wheelbase class. That bike is deceiving. It, it does not feel fast. It doesn't mean it's not fast. It just does not feel fast. And that's the bike, like, you will literally be like, you know, you'll be doing 150, 160, and it doesn't feel like it because for that to be a new bike, BMW has that so daggum refined, which to me signifies this could be scary in the coming in the coming future because that bike just came out and it, the market for that bike isn't huge. It's growing, but it isn't huge. Just imagine in a year or two when it has the support and the following like the previous gen S1000 has. That, that new 2020 is gonna be a problem. I see that being a problem. Uh, the bike doesn't feel torquey. Doesn't feel like it has uh, just a ton of horsepower, but that bike moves. Like, <laughs> the, I don't know what they did, but that bike moves. And the way Jack B. Quick has it set up, and I believe he works with Brent Tune. For a stock wheelbase class to run as good as it did, dude, I was I was impressed. Like, uh, Zoclo went up against um, uh, TBN, EJR performance bike, and everyone knows that ZX-10 is an absolute monster. Zoclo still lost. It's, Zoclo got the business. I mean, he got his tail kick. You would've thought, you know, it was dead shot getting the tail kick. That's how bad it got beat. But, dude, he put up a solid fight for, you know, a bike that's max separate and a stock wheel based bike to do that good. Like, I mean, I get it. A win is a win, a loss is a loss. But that's the stuff I look at. I'm just like, yo, that was that was actually pretty daggone decent. You know what I mean? It's an easy bike to ride. I think that's like, if you're a newer rider getting into the sport bike scene, I think you could use that bike. Like, it just, it's just not aggressive at all. Like, Deadshot is aggressive, so everything seems a little docile compared to Deadshot, but Deadshot is stupid aggressive. 
The next bike I rode was a completely stock um, Aprilia 1100 factory uh, by my man Racing Turtle. And I appreciate, I appreciate everyone for this experience. Also, just a side note, this is just the disclaimer. This is nothing rude against nobody. This is not to talk down about nobody's bike or nothing. This is just literally, excuse me, this is just my experience of what I felt. So, dude, I'm really not trying to be rude to anybody or say nothing bad about anybody's bike. That's, that's not the purpose of this video. I'm just explaining more in depth of what I felt when I was, you know, on, on each, each person's bike. So the next bike was the uh, Aprilia 1100 Factory. Um, that bike was uh, that bike was interesting. It was my first time being on the Aprilia, and of course, the sound is just the sound is similar to the sound of the uh, the R1 and the MP10 with the cross plane. It's just that sound you you almost can't beat. You know the sound of an Aprilia uh, RSV4. That to me personally, that's the best sounding bike out there. It's just you can't beat. It sounds like a little V8 or something, man. It just sounds so good that bike um it was completely stock i would be interested to ride one that has a little bit of modifications done to it but that bike uh very similar to the uh, s1000 was um just real calm real tame didn't really um give you that stupid excitement because even though the bike was moving it just didn't give you the feeling of it like the bike was moving but that bike is crazy with my bike set up how it is minus the straps so this with the carbon wheels and everything uh, I was able to beat the RS before in a half mile, but he he skywalked me. Like when I say he skywalked me, when he passed me, like he was gone. It wasn't like a slow pull past me. Like he, it wasn't like this. It was like yeah, I am gone, and that's a hundred percent stock. So just imagine a tune and an exhaust on that thing, dude. He is he is gone, man. He was gone. So that was a that was a real fun experience on that bike. Uh, very agile. I mean, Aprilia's been running that similar style bike for a minute for their flagship bike. So they just they just got it down, just like the S1000, dude. It is it is absolutely refined. There's like there's nothing that's not refined about that bike. Like they paid attention to every detail, like all the way. If someone set one of those up for road racing, that could be a problem, especially like uh, for the um, the Dallas guys and the um, the Miami people running nine tenths. Uh, RS before 1100 factory could be. I don't know if it's RV4 1100 factory, but the 1100 factory setup can actually be some trouble for somebody. So if someone sets one up, bro, that'll be that'll that'll that I think that'll be the new thing. <laughs> Something else about the BMW, I just remember, dude, like the navigation and just just the man, the BMW got down, man. Just the I don't know if you call them amenities, I don't know what the luxuries that the BMW offers you, man. Dude, it's hard to beat that bike. It's just that that's a good that's a good solid all around bike, man, that you can just build upon. Um, so the next bike that I rode uh, would be uh, would be Rocket Taxi. Um, of course, set up by EJR. Um, they, uh, the R1 is a platformer and they've just kind of been known to be not as strong, not as powerful as the other bikes out there, but their down low and mid ranges, they got some grunt, dude. They, um, it honestly reminds me similar to Deadshot, even though the power delivery is definitely different. I think the R1s have more top end than what Deadshot has, but their down low mid-range grunt is it is very similar to Deadshot, how it gives it to you. And maybe that's their trade-off. They give you some down low and some mid-range grunt, but you lose a little bit of the top end. Um, but Rocket Taxi was, uh, it's set up by EJR, so it's it's set up for roll racing. So that, that joint was ridiculous, man. Um, that joint was ridiculous. I mean, even if R1s are the slower bike in the segment, I mean, I, I don't know for sure. I haven't ridden every bike, but this is just what, you know, people are saying. Even if it is the slower one in the segment, the way EJR has Rocket Taxi set up, instantly one of the top contenders. I mean, I don't care what you want. I mean, as far as NA bikes though, it's it's instantly a top contender. It's, you, you, you go be in for a bike with Rocket Taxi. Bike felt real solid, set up really good. Um, even being lowered and stretched, it didn't seem to lose much of its agileness. But that bike, that bike, it'll beat you, man. It seems like it's stronger, you know, coming off the hit or whatever than it is top end. But even top end, it's still, that thing still pulls hard, man. Um, and I know uh, Reaper, going into the next bike, Reaper has the S1000. Um, and I rode his bike that's a uh, stock wheelbase. And I, that's tuned by True Performance. Um, the difference I felt between Rocket Taxi and the S1000 tuned by True Performance, like, and you, you guys have seen the battle, Reaper a lot of times will edge Rocket Taxi out, 
just at the end and I know there's a clear weight difference, but the S1000, honestly, from the seat of your pants, feels stronger than the R1 when you're when you're in the throttle. Like off the rip, R1 feels good. But once you get past that mid, mid range, the S1000 feels literally legit feels stronger than the R1. I know there's a weight difference, but I think the motor top end wise is just stronger than the R1. So I don't think, you know, I don't even know much you can do about that unless you get some motor work or something done or whatever. Um, but what I felt from Reaper's uh, S1000, dude, that joint, dude, it's strong, man. It is strong, very, very strong up top. And another bike that feels very similar to that is the ZX10 I rode from Dylan, which is stock wheelbase class. Also another bike tuned by EJR. Dude, it, dude, it felt strong. Like it, um, the power did seem to drop off, um, but not much. Like it's like you were still pulling. It was still pulling. It just wasn't pulling as hard as it was when you first ripped the throttle. But dude, no, them bikes were pulling, man. So the previous generation S1000 and the uh, fifth gen ZX10, dude, they feel very similar with how they deliver power, and they feel like they honestly would be a good battle. It still honestly feels like, like to me, it felt like the BMW was a little bit more premium than the ZX10. Could have been the materials they used, I don't know. But also in that, it felt like the S1000 was stronger, just a little bit up top, not by much, but just a little bit up top. So I would, I would boil that down to a, to a rider's race where the R1 probably would fall off and lose because of its top end. The S1000 and ZX10, I think that comes down to a rider's race. But I haven't ridden this bike and I'm, I'm throwing it in there just for comparison. Outspoken Tiger's R1M. I don't know what he did to that thing, but to be stock wheelbase and run as hard and as fast as it is, I don't know what he did to his bike. Like I said, I didn't review his bike, but whatever he done to his bike, dude, it's ridiculous. Cause I, I've i never seen the R1 pull that hard up top. I, I ain't rode that bike. All I'm saying is the videos I've seen with his bike, I don't know what he did to his R1M, but that joint is running. And maybe the R1M is a little bit different than the R1, I don't know. But all I know is that man's R1 is, is that gum running, man. I just did um, just did five ups bike. Also, I rode um, Flash, Dylan's bike. I'm not Dylan, uh, Deontay's V4. So Deontay's V4 has exhaust, full exhaust, and I believe it has an up map, but it doesn't have a full tune on it or whatever. And that bike, even in that state, that bike was the only bike I felt that reminded me of the Busa. Like the, my friend's Busa I reviewed really wasn't set up. It had full exhaust, it had a power commander, and it had, uh, it was lowered and it had the extensions in it, the swing arm extensions in it. That bike, even though when that video came out, I lost every race on that bike, everyone I lost. But that bike pulled and just kept pulling. Like the pull didn't drop off. Like the initial hit, what you got, it just, it literally stayed there. Beep. That same pull, that same G4s literally felt like it stayed there. And even though I lost every race, there was a point in every race, people were, there were 14 trains ahead of me. Like the race is over, there's no way I can win. And there's no way the camera can honestly pick it up. But there was a point in that race, even though there were 14 trains out, that pull they had stopped. And the booster actually either matched it or started to come back. But of course, it's four, I'm 14 trains back. So, I mean, it doesn't matter. But that impressed me about the booster that even with so little done to it, it kept pulling. But, you know, that could be the size of the motor. You got, you know, 1,000 cc's versus, you know, 1,300 cc's. Of course, the 1,300 cc should be, should be stronger or whatever. But, um, so yeah, let's go back to Deontay's bike. Just has the exhaust and the, um, and the up map. Bike ran really strong, very much reminded me of the Busa. And then fast forward a month or two, I get to ride Five Ups bike, which is set up for stock wheelbase class roll racing. So it's not nothing extreme. It's still pretty much the full weight. It has the exhaust, the Acura exhaust, it's lowered, and it has the brand tune on it, it has the front end straps. That bike is running. Like in the video where I reviewed Five Ups bike, he was racing Rocket Taxi. And you know, the, the clips I put up, Rocket Taxi actually won and Rocket Taxi actually beat him. Which this is, again, nothing against nobody. But you gotta understand, Rocket Taxi isn't Max Shepard, but he's set up with the extended swing arm, the carbon wheels for roll racing. Five Ups bike is a V4 Speciale, lowered with exhaust and a tune. No arm, no carbon wheels, the brake rotors are there with straps. 
even if he lost. Dude, that's pretty impressive. Like I don't like I said it before, don't get me wrong. Win is a win and an L is an L. But, you know, for a stock wheel based bike to still have his weight minus the exhaust versus a bike that's set up for road racing, getting as light as it possibly can get, and to be that close, win or lose, dude, that's impressive. That's what I look at. You know what I mean? That's impressive. And everyone got their own thing. And like I said, an L is an L, a W is a W. But to be like that, dude, that's freaking impressive. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. That's just stuff I look at. You know, like that shot gets beat a lot. Dude, I, I don't. I, I don't care. I, I mean, I'm impressed that this 2012 can even jump in the ring, man. You know what I'm saying? And put up some kind of fight, you know, at some time. And other times it's not a fight. Like, uh, my boy Rich, not a fight. Not a fight at all. Uh, my, my dude that, Ms. Reyes, not a fight. Not a fight at all. You know, I, I got, I definitely got, <laughs> I got drug and got the bees knees. So, for five bucks bike, to have that done and run with a bike that's closer to the scale of Max Effort, super impressed with that bike. And there's room for improvement if 5UP wanted to. And now we're gonna get to the Busa, and this is what I was so impressed with about the Busa. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this statement and I'm gonna go ahead and explain it. There is not one better, not one better, I don't care what segment it is, there's not one better all around bike than a Hayabusa, not one. I'm gonna just let that sink in for a second. Dude Mungus, what do you mean about that? There's not another bike that hits every category and does it exceptionally well. Maybe it's not the best in that category, but it does it well. Take the R1 from EJR, got that good down low, good mid-range torque. Busa has that too, but where the R1 falls off, the Busa has, Busa has the legs to go get it. And again, that's a, that's a bigger motor. You know what I mean? Where the ZX-10 and the uh, S1000 might feel a little weaker down low, but stupid strong up top. Again, the boost is strong, literally low, mid, and top end. And on top of that, it's a comfortable bike. Stupid, it's probably, there's no bike I've been on personally that I've ridden all day. And when normally when I get home from riding that shot, wife, we already know, I want something to eat and I want to lay down. I just want to relax. When I kept that booster for two, almost three weeks, dude, I, I would get home and be fine. I would be, what are we doing? Yeah, hit, let's do it. I got all the injury in the world. I don't need to take a nap. I'm good. I still want to eat because you know your boy want to eat, but I'm good though. The, the booster compared to the V4, both of those bikes are extremely comfortable. And even though both the bikes are wide, the V4 for me, because I'm a shorter rider, I'm five, six and a half, respect my half. I see somebody laughing, don't you laugh at me, respect my half, you know what I'm saying? I said it before, if you had $1.5 million, you wouldn't want somebody to take your $0.5 million away, would you? No, respect the half. I'm five, six and a half. And even with those bikes being as wide as it is, the V4 felt uncomfortably wide. Not that it's nothing you couldn't get used to. It just, it didn't fit my frame as well as I thought it could have. The Busa, literally just felt it just felt good you know what i mean you know what i'm saying so where the v4 honestly doesn't feel steve's bike is different because his is set up and it's it's ridiculous i'm talking about a booster that's not set up for nothing it's just it when my friend made this booster he just wanted it to sound good and he wanted it to look good there was no no roll racing in his mind now the v4 steve's v4 is different he wanted it to roll race so it's set up gears are changed i don't you know honestly i don't know what he did to his bike i just know it's set up with the tune so it's set up for road racing. This booster had none of that. What? None of that. So where the V4 typically wouldn't feel strong down low, but then you get that mid-range up top that jumps turns into a monster. The booster has the low range to be a monster. The booster has the mid-range to be a monster. The booster has the top end to be a monster. My friend here, Shinko's on his bike. Put some Michelin's on there. There's no reason you can't kill the, kill the curves. Actually, go back to a couple weeks ago, my boy Rich was killing Blood Mountain, killing Blood Mountain on the booster. And he was comfortable, cause I know he was comfortable cause I kept the booster for a while. I know it was comfortable. I even said in the video, bro, I kinda wish I had that booster right now. And something else about bikes. Death shot, 2012, so the design, I think it's timeless, but you know, it is getting dated when the V4 is out. So I feel like this bike, the V4, the ZX-10, 
you know, the S1000, I feel like they're cutting through the wind. Shot, sharp knife. Bow, cutting through the wind. The Busa? Bro, I felt like the Busa moved with the wind. What you, ooh, ooh, what you doing, wind? I'm a move with you, what, what? And dude, that feeling was insane. Like the Busa literally didn't feel like it was in try hard mode until it got to like 130, 140. Then it was like, okay, I think I'm gonna try now. That's what it, honestly what it felt like. Like you didn't feel that motor like, yeah, okay, let's get to it. You didn't feel that until you got to that upper RPM, I mean, that upper RPM band. And again, when I was racing these other bikes, when we get to 150, 160, 170, of course, you know, most races are almost over by that time, but you know, they start to drop off a little bit. They still pulling, but they start to drop off a little bit. That Busa was just getting into his legs. Like, just getting into the stride. Like, all right, boy, yeah, yeah, but like before you do the run, it's just like, all right, let's go. And then you hit that 150, 160, that just stride. Ah, ah, let's go, boy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, bro. That's literally what the Busa felt like. This is just a quick talk I wanted to have about all the bikes I've ridden in 2020. There are two more bikes I have to ride, um, but I don't think I'm gonna get them in before 2020. One is my boy Saints bike. He has a bike set up like Silver Surfer was, a uh, stock wheelbase ZX10, except for he has, excuse me, he has carbon wheels, and I believe his is by Nick Performance and not EJR. So that's one that's definitely coming. I have to ride an H2, which I have an invitation to. I just gotta wait until, you know, time permits so I can get to that one. But I, I'm super excited about that H2 because, but I'm telling you, I am a turbo guy. I love Boost. Boost in any kind of way, I'm, I'm all about it. So I'm, I'm gonna be kind of hyped to ride this H2. And I'm just telling you right now, don't get annoyed with me because all you go hear is I'm skidoo, 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 skidoo. I'm gonna rip the throttle just so I can come off of it. And it goes skidoo. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just preparing y'all right now. That's what your boy's gonna do. And I know there's different setups. There's weight that plays a difference or whatever. I'm literally talking about setup for setup. We have the same stuff done, same mods done, setup for setup. Like, just take a ZX10. Let's drop as much weight out the ZX10 as we can. Set it up. Same thing with the booster. Let's drop as much weight as we can out of it. Set it up. Setup for setup, you're not gonna beat a booster in a roll race. That's just my opinion. There's there's so many different variables, but I'm talking to apples to apples, same rider weight to same rider weight, mod for mod. That's that's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? I just I don't think there's I don't think you can beat a boost as far as uh I don't think you can beat a boost. It's just it's too good of an all-around bike. But yes. Yeah. That was my quick review on all the bikes I've ridden in 2020. I appreciate y'all um, hanging out with me. I appreciate y'all all the support you guys always give. 2021 is gonna be great. Keep rocking with your boy. You know what it is. One shot, dead shot. Two monkeys. No shot go out there. No monkey. Thank you for watching, dudes. No monkey. Thank you for watching, dudes. No monkey.